the things we talk about before this show goes live on the air. You don't care about that, though. You care about the two Monday night football games we've got. Mark Zitto already laughing, and we're less than 10 seconds into the program. Mark, very good that we've got two Monday night football games tonight from the National Football League and uh, one Roger Dale, because there's only four Major League Baseball games. But we got, we're going to give you two baseball plays yeah. and one best bet for Monday night football. Buddy, another week in the saddle. You're laughing and you want to say something. Well, I mean, thank God I'm laughing because there was nothing to laugh about on Saturday. The way Georgia Tech didn't cover, uh, there was nothing to laugh about on Sunday. The way Anthony Richardson decided not to run the ball except to continue to throw five-yard out routes 12 yards wide. Um, yeah, so we didn't have a lot of fun there. But I'm glad that Joe Ranieri has got us in a good mood this morning. So thank you and kudos to him for doing so. Uh uh, like, can I, let me Houston. just do this and get out of the way. Hold on. Let me just do this and get out of the way so I could save you the, the, the problem of, you know, stroking yourself and tooting your own horn later. You had an excellent weekend. You had an excellent weekend on Saturday and on Sunday. Okay? So I will let people acknowledge. I will acknowledge for the people that you had a wonderful Saturday, a great Sunday. I did eat a hot dog. Was- yeah, uh, I should have eaten a rally burger at some point because I could have used a damn rally. I uh, didn't get one. But uh, was it 3 0 Saturday and 3 0 Sunday in college and NFL? Did you sweep the no, board? I was uh, 2 0 in NFL, 3 1 overall yesterday. And then on Saturday, I was uh, 2 1 1, but I did win my 5% play on Texas Tech. Thank you very much. I had that so. same over you did with the George Tech. But it was a good weekend. We're number one in football. It, well, thank you for your kind words. I, no, no, no. But you, you know where else? We, hold on. Don't say we are number one in football. That would imply that I would be with you, which I am not. Well, you're always with say me in spirit. I, we need to get to the I, pick, I, by the way. <laughs> you, I, you know where they could be happy? Where? You know where they I. In Houston, because the Houston Astros can clinch the AL West tonight, and you would like to enlighten our fine viewers on Mariners Astros. You've got an angle for this big AL West Tilt. I love how you just decided to change the subject. Anyway, uh, yeah, let's go uh, (laughs) Angels. First five run line here with Hunter Brown on the mound. Um, Look, Hunter Brown's a starter that we've liked to back uh, pretty much since the beginning of June. It struggled at the outset at the beginning of the year. We'll get to that in a a second. But, you know, it's been really good at home. 3-4-9 ERA. Opposing hitters batting just 224 against them. Um, You know, nine strikeouts per inning or nine strikeouts per nine innings. 81 Ks, 80 innings on the year. Interestingly enough, he's a much better pitcher at night, which is crazy. 285 ERA at night, 519 ERA during the day. Apparently, he's pitched a lot during the day. But guess what? He's got 20 night starts, and 285 is pretty good. The time of this game tonight, BP, would be at night. night, In case you were wondering. (laughs) Hunter Brown has faced the Mariners three times this year. Go back to the first time he faced them in Seattle, uh, all the way, I'm sorry, I'd rather in Houston, all the way back on May 5th. This was coming off a really bad start to the year in which Hunter Brown had an ERA of 11 through the month of April. So getting to the month of May, gets a decent start at home against the uh, four and a third, five hits, two runs. He doesn't last all that long, throws 91 pitches, they get him out of here. Next two starts against Seattle, one at the end of May, one in July, combined 12 innings, eight hits, one run, and 14 strikeouts. Clearly, he knows how to get this lineup out, plus is a Seattle lineup that strikes out a lot. Love fading a lineup that strikes out a ton, um, like Seattle does, especially when you're talking about a first five game because that's really going to help you as far as uh, uh, guys who who swing and miss. So uh, we get all that in the saddle again. Seattle, a team that is still top three in K rate over the year, or over the course of the season, so we're good there. Now let's look at the flip side of this thing. After Hunter Brown, you get the starter for the Seattle Mariners here in Bryce Miller. Uh, Bryce Miller, as Brian Power would say, like every other Seattle pitcher on this staff, stinks on the road. Just for some comparison's sake, his ERA at home, 1.96. His ERA on the road, 4.44. Enough for me there. Houston scores more at home. They're a top 10 offense at home in OPS and slugging percentage and, and runs scored. Houston should be able to get this done here. They'll be excited and motivated to clinch. And here's the thing. I'll, I'll say this now before tomorrow. They clinch tonight. You know what we're doing? playing against them tomorrow for the letdown spot. So let's get home tonight. First five, Seattle run line, minus a half at a pretty nice uh, uh, manageable around minus 105, minus 110. 
Houston run line, just to clarify there. Houston run line. What did I say? Seattle? Seattle. Did I say Seattle? Yeah, that's the other Screwed team. It up. Yeah, that's the other team. Oh, yeah, that's okay. I mean, Houston, I'm, I'm going to have to have somebody edit that video later on. No, that's okay. We just did it right here. We're live, pal. All right. Give us, give us that like. If you are riding with Mark Zinno, Houston Astros, first five run line. Uh, I'm taking an underdog here on the show today. Full game. Giants plus 145 at the D-backs. For me, Zeno, this is more about fading Arizona than any sort of, you know, uh, big endorsement of San Francisco. Arizona is coming off a seven-game road trip. And what happened to them on Sunday? Well, they blew a massive lead in Milwaukee and lost. I was very happy to see that. The Brewers were my 4% game of the week. Always love those spots where the home team's trying to avoid a four-game sweep. Didn't look good early. Milwaukee's bullpen kept them in it, though, and they stole the game in the bottom of the eighth. And so Arizona, you got to wonder about their mental state, don't you, Mark, coming to this series opener? They blow. They they were up eight runs, and they lost uh, yesterday. That's uh, that, that's tough to get over. Eduardo Rodriguez, all right, the team's three and two in his last five starts, but 5.84 ERA for Rodriguez during that stretch. So he hasn't pitched well. He's lucky the Arizona bats have bailed him out. And the Giants come into this series, guys, pretty good form. They just swept the Royals in Kansas City. We talk about it all the time. The Royals are a good team at home, but uh, San Fran outscores them 13-1 to over the course of three games. Back-to-back shutout wins. Hayden Birdsong is a guy who I feel has pitched better than some of the numbers show. He was good. He got the win his last time out. I like the Giants at the fat plus price here. I think this is a spot where Arizona uh, is just likely to be ambushed. Giants on the money line. You can find them around plus 145. Let us know your favorite baseball picks for money. I'm getting a little hot. Is it almost sweaty? I might take my shirt off here on the show. I'm actually going to keep it. I'm going to keep it on. But, uh... Please do. Please do. There are, there are many of our, our, our coworkers who enjoy doing that sort of thing on their free time. Um, but also, you know, uh, Hayden Birdsong is not a guy you want to back because his name is stupid. So... You know I, I knew you were gonna. House. I was gonna try to move past that. I was gonna try to. I know you don't like his name, but you know what? I mean, He's I, gonna I, get good. Even his name as a first name feels kind of you know, but bird song. Like if your your last name is Bird Song, just be Fred. You know, just just know. Gus. You know, maybe even a Brian Brian Bird Song. Like that sounds okay. But I guarantee Hayden he plays bird. acoustic guitar. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> there we go. Right. Let's uh that's baseball. Okay. We gave you two plays. Mark Zeno, Astros, first five run line, me, Giants, plus one forty five on the money line. Let's talk about Monday Night Football because there's two games here, Mark. Uh oh. Bills and Jaguars. <laughs> The, I'm going to be talking a, uh, in depth about this game on Wager Talk today with Teddy and Prez later on today. I'll say this. That's going to be trend, a The <laughs> trends, yes. The trends point to Jacksonville. You look at how these oh, desperate 0-2 teams did yesterday, save for Tennessee. They all stepped up when they got it done. Uh, t- 0-2 teams facing uh, that, that were coming off a home loss. I think Ralph Michaels talked about this trend last week on Wage Talk today. But 0-2 road teams coming off a home loss. Jacksonville's in that situation tonight. They were 3-for-3 three three yesterday. Denver, Carolina, and Baltimore. I know you hate Doug Peterson. You don't really like Trevor Lawrence. Your opinion on this number, is it too short on Buffalo here? I mean, I think or it's what do you think? I would take the points. Um, I would take the points. Well, I would I would lean it with Buffalo. I, I, they're a better team, and this is not a good Jacksonville defense. And if you'd like to go back to last year, um, you know the game in London, if you remember it at all, uh, that was the that was the second game for Jacksonville of being yes. the, the Jacksonville does a two week deal. Remember this because this is one time I will play on Jacksonville. They're going to do a double a back to back London trip again. Jacksonville played in London their first game. I think they lost. I, I want to say it was. I also want to say it was to the Falcons that they lost. But then they came back and beat Buffalo in a game that was really low scoring for three quarters, and then they got seven. Uh, they got twenty seven points in the fourth quarter between both teams. Um, but it was a game where the Bills just played really poorly. They had no run game uh, at all to speak of, and it, it, Jacksonville's defense kind of stepped up. But some of that again was the travel and everything else. I think there's some revenge factor here for Buffalo, if you believe in that sort of thing. 
um, to end up playing against the Jaguars here. And look, if this game was in Jacksonville, I would be very hesitant to lay it with Buffalo. But at home, on a night game, in Orchard Park, New York, um, give me the better team. Give me the better quarterback by a wide margin. Now, both of these coaches are putzes, so that scares me a little bit. Whenever you get a game with two bad coaches, uh, I, I always kind of want to stay away because look at those idiots. Um, it, it never ends up going well. But to this point, Josh Allen hasn't even gotten going yet, and Buffalo has scored 65 points in two games uh, against defenses that were you know, no better or worse than Jacksonville. I mean, Jacksonville can stop the run. They were pretty good at it last year. But still, this is a spot here tonight where I feel like the other thing I'd look for, BP, is for Josh Allen to take off and run, right? I'm curious as to what his rushing yard prop is. Let me look it up real quick. But that's another way I would go just because – Allen can do so much on his own. It's 31 and a half. That's pretty low for Josh Allen. Doesn't it feel that way? You should probably turn your microphone on, dummy. Oh, is, is that the way the show works? You're supposed to keep the microphone on? I didn't know no, that. No, we actually <laughs> expect our, our, our audience, which is incredibly intelligent, um, to be able to, to read lips. Lip, as well. Read lips. Read lips. Okay. Well, there you go. All right. The microphone's back on. Hey, Mark's. No, Mark's hey, Josh Allen at 31 and a half rushing yards. That feels pretty low, no? If he breaks two, I th- he we, you know that's all it takes to go over that prop. So we are, by the way, you and I are in agreement on a prop on the other game. That's going to be our show best bet. We'll give that out in just a moment. Uh, you and I kind of maybe on different sides of that Bills Jaguars game, but Cincinnati Washington. You talk about desperate zero and two teams, Mark Sino. Cincinnati lost to New England in Week One, and then they lost a tough one to the Chiefs in Week Two. A lot of things didn't go their way down the stretch. Now they're at home. They're a seven point seven and a half point favorite. Full disclosure, I have the Bengals in a the second leg of a teaser with the Eagles, who I teased yesterday. Uh, so uh, I've got the Bengals minus one and a half here. I think they certainly win this game. And the, the player prop we're looking at here is Jamar Chase. I'm going to keep the handicap very simple. You can expound on this if you'd like, okay? The Washington Commanders are very bad at covering wide receivers. Jamar Chase is a, is a wide receiver for Cincinnati. He's a very good wide receiver. He has no touchdowns yet this year. He is not going to go all season without a touchdown. Jamar Chase, anytime touchdown at plus money is our show best bet. What would you like to add to that? The only thing I would add uh, that I think backs that up is that T. Higgins is back. So uh, you have to now worry about two legitimate wide receivers. You can't just key in on Chase because that Higgins guy will get open. So with Higgins on the field, that at least should draw some secondary attention uh, away from Chase, that would open things up a little more. I think the the possibility of Chase uh, scoring a touchdown here is pretty high. I think you are correct in your very lowbrow analysis that the commanders <laughs> are not very good at defending people and covering people. And Jamar Chase, because he won't have no touchdowns all year long, might find the end zone in this game. I mean, high-level stuff that you can't get anywhere else other than the morning major, folk. <laughs> If you'd like more of a technical breakdown, I will say this. After two weeks, the Washington Commanders defense was 32nd out of 32 teams in EPA per play. So they're not very good, no matter how you want to say it. Jamar Chase, anytime touchdown, our show best bet. Mark Sinnoh, say something nasty about it. I I had to sneak in an EPA reference because if we don't use some sort of analytics here on the show, people will never know what we're talking about. Can you just say they're dead last in pass defense? Ted last in what? You know, I need to say the metric. You don't need the metric. Just, just say the. Uh, just you know say what? They're dead last. It's, they're dead last in what? Dead last. <laughs> if I have to choose between your lowbrow analysis and you picking up nerd terms, go with the lowbrow analysis. At least do it for the audience's sake, okay? Because no one cares about your EPA. You know what they should care about? You know what? You're so nasty to me there. I'm going to promote myself right now. Number one in football, wagetalk.com this season, hitting 70% in the NFL and college combined. Perfect 6-0 and the last two weeks in the NFL. That uh, feels pretty, pretty good. My only play for today up for sale is a Major League Baseball total. It is available for only $15. I am 9-2 and my last 11 MLB totals. 4-0-1 oh, the last five days overall. In MLB, WT.buzz slash BP is the place to go. Mark Zeno, tell them what you got at your page for today. I have nothing. I, I have nothing. I, I, there's not much. There's not. I, I don't bring much to the table. There's not many. Was that a Whitney Houston song? Yes, I, I got nothing. 
<laughs> the fact that you know that is a little bit disturbing uh, beyond that. But, uh, yeah, uh, look, we'll, we'll have a baseball playoff. That's one thing we've been good at. We're, we're, we're turning the corner here on the in, in college and the NFLs. We're off to a little bit of a slow start. But uh, like you guys know, you always get honesty from me and understand where we are. So uh, we'll keep grinding away. Process over results, people. Nobody knows what that means, but I'm going to keep saying it because it sounds good. WT.buzz slash MZ. Uh, we'll get the package up right, right after the show. All right. I think that does it for another outstanding edition of the Morning Wager, if I do say so myself. The people are great. You can hear them clapping. A smattering of applause. All right. I think we should be played off the stage right now. Maybe we get a jingle. Maybe we get a jingle. I, I, you know, can you just let it happen organically? You know, oh, like if okay. it's the moment is right and it comes in. I, I mean, you have... Like, do you not understand the moment? Just kind of comes in on itself. You don't have to call for it. You don't have to make for it. I mean, I know you're like, ain't not big all, but I'll do that. Have a little respect. I'm sorry. At least it's play. He's Mark Zinno. I'm Ryan right. Power. Until next time, guys. Like, comment, and subscribe. Until next time, let's catch the ticket.